original to the hotel from the 1920s. They were painted in 1922. Um, they were commissioned by the railway um, at the time to attract guests to the southwest. So there's iconic pieces, El Tovar, here you have Chinas dancer. So we pride ourselves in owning and curating original artwork. So um, our corridors on every level of the hotel are filled with original art. These are more contemporary pieces we have. These were purchased after Indian Market, I think two years ago. These are painted windows, so you'll see they surround the entire restaurant. These were painted by an artist, Ernesto Martinez. He was an in-house, um, he worked actually in the maintenance department, but he was also an artist, so um, they were originally influenced by Mary Elizabeth Jane Coulter, who, who started the tradition and he kept it alive over the years. So let's go up this way. This is a, our iconic portal. This is a Ron and Beck piece, um, a terracotta ball relief. We also have a similar piece in the Santa Fe room behind this room here. Those are very signature works commissioned by Mary Coulter. This piece is by a up-and-coming, very talented Native American artist, Jordan Craig. Um, so we have multiple pieces of hers in our collection. And these large murals on both sides here are by Vladin Stiha, who used to have a gallery here in the hotel. Currently, our chairman of the board, Jenny Kimball. She is our curator and very, very good at what she does. It, she's very passionate. Every year we add to the collection. This glass chandelier is by Native American artist Ira Luhan. He does a lot of art glass work. He's very talented. All right. That was a piece by Marla Ellison, Mateo Romero, and Ryan Singer. And they worked on it together. And you'll see that they're blocks. So they're meant to be interchangeable. So you can incorporate different works in different panels. Um, so a couple of years ago, they, they put it back to the original. Um, but there's times when we'll just change out the pieces. The artists will get back together and change out the pieces again. So you'll notice everywhere you look in the Fonda there are artistic details. So essentially it's like walking through a piece of art. Um, this tin work is very traditional to New Mexico and um, as we did the guest room renovation of the hotel we incorporated these details. It's actually a Spanish comb painting style, but you'll see that this is introduced to every uh, guest room. So you have the comb painting, just another artistic element. This indicates that it's a guest room, and then you'll see when we um, walk by the meeting rooms, they have different panels around it to indicate that it's a meeting room. These mirrors are, they were commissioned by Mary Elizabeth Jane Coulter and we have them throughout the entire property. Each of our guest rooms um, has original art. Stairwell here. So this is for the meeting room. So this, this uh, design 
corresponds to the meeting rooms. our centennial we put these panels on the elevator and tried to kind of share a little bit about what the story is so this is um, look how small the beds were this is an original headboard um, and I'm not sure who the artist here is specifically but original to the hotel laundry chutes gorgeous hand-painted details portion of the building, we totally gutted uh, all of the previous internal piping, electricity, HVAC, everything, and updated it to the current standards and, and um, sustainability best practices. So we have energy efficient windows. Um, and in this room, we don't have the concrete floor, but some of the rooms were taken down to the original stained concrete floor design, which um, was actually quite like a nod back to Mary Coulter. That was some of her original designs. So gorgeous hand-painted headboards. Um, you should take a look at the view out here. Lighting, the light pictures are a nod back to Coulter's original designs, and we commissioned the work, all of the work, by local artisans. We have Colcha embroidery on the curtain. This is very traditional to New Mexico. Again, the lighting inspired by Mary Coulter, the new lighting that we installed. Uh, the carpet also. We worked with uh, local Native American designers, one of them being Brian Vio. Um, he assisted with the renovation and hand painted many of the headboards in, in the guest rooms. by a kind of local established um, cartoon artist, Ricardo Cate. And he publishes pieces in the Santa Fe New Mexican that are really, really clever. He's a really, really smart, clever artist. Um, he does a lot of political commentary on Native American perspective of the local region politics. This piece is a... Jonathan Kendall, and a lot of his work was acquired by trade. So uh, the previous owners, Sam and Ethel Ballin, had very generous hearts, and they worked with, you know, they could never turn anyone away. So they gave uh, Jonathan Kendall a place to stay um, in trade for his beautiful artwork. Again, more hand-painted details that just add to the beauty of the hotel. So I'm taking you to the Terrace Inn at La Fonda. Um, we recently completed the renovation of the Terrace Inn. Uh, it's an exclusive experience located above our parking garage. There's 15 suites often used for bridal parties. Um, once you get up there, you'll see why. It's gorgeous. It has the best view in downtown Santa Fe. Uh, a beautiful exterior terrace overlooking the, the cathedral here. There was one weekend, we had four weddings booked in one weekend. Um, so it's common to have this space is booked pretty much year-round, but we can do weddings 
not only up on the terrace level, we have the Santa Fe room, we have the largest ballroom in Santa Fe, so there is plenty of opportunity and space. Welcome to the terrace level. In the, uh, the 30s, the 20s and the 30s, the rabbits held the ashtrays in the lobby. So, Del Kerfman was commissioned to do this triptych, and um, he really considered the local color palette from the local geography and scenes to incorporate into the painting. And um, you'll see why this resonates so deeply with the terrace experience when we enter the guest room. This construction, I, I believe, was completed in the 80s. Um, that's when they originally built guest rooms on this level. And um, we, we've operated it ever since then, but we did remodel and update all of the amenities. Guest services. Hello. Okay. So, you'll see that we incorporated the painting into the shears. Um, and also, we incorporated original Navajo chief blankets to the headboards. So each one of the terrace guest rooms has one of these beautiful hand-woven blankets. to this private hot tub area. It's quite tranquil, peaceful. So this is where you would have the dinner or formal event and dancing. Stained glass window. This is Fray Marcos. He was the first missionary to come into New Mexico. He was working as a, a priest down in Mexico, near Mexico City, and he, um, he heard about all the lost souls up here who needed to be saved. <laughs> and so he started heading up here. And he had an assistant, a black man from North Africa. His name was Esteban. In English, we'd say Stephen. Uh, Esteban was seen, seemed to have a, a knack for talking with the Native Americans. So he went on a lot of tours with the Spanish. He came up here and um, Esteban said, well, I'm going to go up. The, the Padre was going rather slow, you know, plodding along. And uh, Esteban said, I'm going to go up ahead and see what I can find. So he came up uh, to the... Uh, to a Pueblo over by the Arizona border. Yes. And uh, <clears throat> the town was called Hawika. Hawika, and it's still there, the, at least the remains, and some people still do live there. And uh, Esteban started making demands on the people for food and um, 
scouts and so on. Anyway, he started making demands, and the Native Americans killed him on the spot. <gasps> Word got back to the Padre, and so he went up there just close enough to see the village. <laughs> then he hightailed it back to Mexico. And that would be the end of the story, except that uh, the Spanish were exceptional at writing reports. If you were clergy or if you were civil servant, you spent most of your time writing reports. And of course, you elaborated on them as much as you could. So we know the rest of the story. Um, guess who would read that report, but none other than Coronado, the great conquistador. Yeah, so he brought an army up here, and he stayed two years. He was looking for cities of gold, rumored cities of gold. And um, the Native Americans were really smart. They say, go five days that way and you come to a city of gold. So he'd take off. <laughs> he'd take off and go out. And then he'd discover it was a hoax. Then he'd come back and try to punish the people who told him to go that way. Anyway, that was his experience for two years here. He totally displaced one pueblo of all the people who lived there so his army could stay over the winter. So that was the type of thing that was going on when the Spanish were coming in. Then he went back home without any gold in his pockets. Uh, Buffalo Dancer, the hotel has about 15 or 16 paintings by this painter. His name was Gerald Cassidy. And uh, he used oil paint on paper. And uh, he was commissioned by the Atchison, Topeka, and the Santa Fe to make these large paintings. And they used them as posters uh, in train stations to encourage people to come to the Southwest on the Santa Fe Railway. So uh, quite, he, and he's one of those who uh, helped start the huge art colony that we have here in uh, Santa Fe today. About 300 art galleries here. On this one, he just put Navajo. And uh, I, I'm quite sure this was Chief Narbona of the Navajos. He was still quite well known when the painter was painting. And, uh, the Navajo tribe is the largest Native American tribe in North America today. They count 300,000 tribal members. And the Navajo Nation straddles New Mexico and Arizona and a little bit of Utah. It's a huge area. If you go visit them over there, they like to say, the Navajo Nation is the size of West Virginia or Maryland, any of those smaller states in the east. So uh, Gerald Cassidy, Navajo. Folks, if you look at the pottery over the door here, these are from different tribes. Um, I think the black one is the most interesting one. It's a wedding vase during the wedding ceremony. The bride drinks out of one side, the groom drinks out of the other. And that's from the San Ildefonso tribe over on the uh, Rio Grande. You see a bear paw print in the front of that black one? That's for good luck among the Pueblo Indians. And you see a piece of turquoise there. That is uh, very important because for hundreds of years, this is where the world got its turquoise. We have turquoise mines south of the city in the Cerritos Hills. Those mines are depleted now. They were mined by the Native Americans, then the Spanish, then the Americans. Um, president Ulysses Grant actually became the president of a mining company here in Santa Fe. Uh, so mining turquoise was the big thing here. This is turquoise country. Today with those um, mines depleted, most of the turquoise comes from Arizona or U uh, Utah. In the early 1950s, manager of the hotel hired a man to be a maintenance man to keep the toilets flushing and the <laughs> faucets running and so on. And it turned out he was an artist, they discovered. And so the manager, Mr. Bowen, said, look, we'll give you free room and board if you dress up the hotel with art. And so uh, that's what happened. He's the one who painted all of these window panes that you see here. Um, there are about 400 window panes, no two are alike. I discovered that no one had written about the hotel that was here before this one. It was called the Exchange Hotel. 
So I researched it and wrote a book about it. It's called Santa Fe's Fonda. That book came out this year. Every month of this year, celebrating the centennial, they have a lecture about the history of the hotel. And uh, I had the privilege of giving the first lecture. It was a book launch for that book, the story of the old inn at the end of the trail, because this is the end of the Santa Fe Trail. Right here. My name is Carol Anglin and I've worked here for 30 years, um, mainly in La Pazuela. And um, you know, La Ponda is such an amazing place, I wouldn't look at it. Why would you go anywhere else? Mark Miller came along and introduced to the world something called Nouvelle Southwestern Cuisine. Then everybody said, well, yes, why wouldn't we use things that grow here or things that are native to this region, and why wouldn't we incorporate what they actually did was created a beautiful hybrid called Northern New Mexican Cuisine, which, which had always existed in these northern mountains. But then the Mexican influence came. We had so many Mexican immigrants working with us, and they brought their culture and their food. So we put it all together, and I think we outdid Mark Miller. No, <laughs> but, but I think we came up with a really beautiful take on what the region had to offer, and what the people who were born and raised here treasured, and what the people who were newcomers to the region, but shared so much culturally, wanted to have to eat and to share every day. So then it started to radically change, you know, and everything all of a sudden had chili in it. <laughs> and people would come and they go, oh, we can't eat that, it's too hot. <laughs> but it, 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 we certainly learned how to temper it for their palates. I guess in the old days when it was a Harvey house, if you ordered a dish with chili, they always provide you a little bowl of sherbet on the side. But now I'd say we're, we're a combination of what's trending and what's come to be known as more healthy, what's local, and what's sort of treasured by the native cultures here. And so, you know, I couldn't tell you any one thing that stands out. They all stand out in my mind. We have so many favorites. For example, the chili rellenos. People will travel miles to eat those chili rellenos. <laughs> so anyway, yeah, I, you know, it's been, in the 30 years I've been here, I've seen it more. But I think what it continues to do is become more friendly to what's regional and culturally, you know, acceptable. So that's a good thing.